Thank you so much for calling in. Please let me know your name and where you're calling in from. Hi. Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm well. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'll try and mute it on here. Um, oh, no worries. So where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from Kansas City, Missouri. Awesome, awesome. What was your name? Sandy. Awesome. Thanks for calling in. What's going on tonight? Yeah, God bless you. So this, I forgive me if this is like a silly question, but um, oh no, it's totally so, cool. So I won't go down the 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 rabbit trail. I'll try not to go down a rabbit trail. So um, I guess so. I recently um, like I met someone that I had a dream about. Like he's spirit filled. I'm spirit filled. Like we've both of our parents are pastors and everything. And um, I had a dream years ago, like, of like meeting my husband. And like, I met this guy. And even before conversating with him, because he goes to like one of my campus uh, churches, um, I had like, um, like two more dreams about him. And then God, like, I guess showed me that, you know, that was the guy for my dream. How, I guess, how crazy is it to, um, I don't know. And I fasted and I prayed about it. And, and I guess I just am trying to see how much weight I should put towards a dream. On whether this guy could possibly be your husband or not? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's crazy. I mean, we fasted and we prayed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say God could definitely use dreams to bring confirmation. I mean, I've heard stories of somebody seeing a guy and God saying that's going to be your husband and they get married and they've been married for 30, 40 years. You know, we, there's people in the chat that have these stories. My mother and father-in-law, my father-in-law walked through the door of a church and my mother-in-law looked at her mom and said, that's going to be my husband. And they've been married for, I don't know, a long time. So it's definitely not weird. It's something that God can definitely do. God spoke to me that Alyssa was going to be my wife. And it was, I would say as close to audibly as you can get. We were in Bible college and the pastor said, go find an area in the room and don't get up till God gives you some type of word or speaks to you or gives you something. And I literally laid on my face and heard God say, Alyssa is your wife. So, and it wasn't like an audible to what I heard in 2011, but it was as close to audible as you can get. Like I felt the Holy Spirit speak that to me in my spirit. And uh, yeah, I've been married for almost 10 years. So I would definitely say God can speak. God can confirm. God can give you dreams. The end of the day, I would say just keep, go to God. Do you have a peace about it? Is he a godly man? You know, like I think a lot of people, and I'm going to get backlash for saying this. I think sometimes we over spiritualize. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So I think sometimes we're like, I need 20 confirmations. I need five prophetic dreams. I need like everything to line up. Like he has to call me in three minutes and say this for it to be God. And sometimes people set their expectations so high and they're like, if God doesn't, you know, do this, I'm not marrying the person. And I think God's like, a man that finds a wife finds a good thing. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's not as complex as we have to have a million confirmations. I think if someone's godly, you're evenly yoked. That's the important part, right? Don't get married to an unbeliever. Making sure you're evenly yoked. You're both following after God. You're both desiring to serve God in the same way. And you're, you know, you're praying, you're fasting, you're in the will of God. Then go, then go get married. You know, I, I'm just not one of those people that's like, you need a million confirmations. I'm like, hey, you found a good thing. He found a wife, you found a husband. It's a great thing. Go get married if you feel. Now, if you have a hesitation, if there's red flags, if you feel uneasy in your spirit, you know, one way God speaks is he gives us a peace about something. But if you don't feel those things in a course, hey, put the brakes on. I think we need to fast. I think we need to pray. One thing, too, I could recommend anybody watching, this could also help, is taking a week to just not talk to each other. And the reason why I say this is because sometimes, you know, you're in the flesh and you have, you like the person for fleshly reasons. And then if you don't talk for a week, say you pray and you fast and those desires and feelings are still there. It's like, okay, maybe that wasn't the flesh. Maybe that was God. Cause if it's God, the, the feelings aren't going to go away, right? If this is God's destiny and will for your life, those feelings are going to stay regardless. So I always recommend that to some people, Hey, maybe take a week off of not talking 24 seven and then see if those feelings are still there. See if that's something God is doing. But yeah. And it also, again, depends on age. Age, you know, I would give an 18 year old different counsel than a 35 year old because the, the maturity level is different. But I think God can definitely speak in a dream um, and say, hey, this is your husband and you have the dream and God confirm it to you, especially if you're asking God for confirmation. It's definitely a biblical way that God would speak. So I don't think you're weird for having those dreams. Okay, awesome. Well, yeah, thank you. Because 
he's talking about marriage. And I'm like, Lord, I feel like this is my husband and you've confirmed it. And I just don't know if it's, if I should really be putting so much weight on it, you know? So uh, thank you so much. I appreciate yeah, it. And God absolutely. For, for I look forward to the great. wedding. I hope you guys have a great wedding. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Awesome. God bless you. Thanks so much for calling in. God bless. Awesome. Good question. How much weight should you put on a dream? That's something you got to go by your own conviction. And what is God speaking to you? It's hard for me to say yes or no when it comes to dreams, because dreams are very prolific in scripture. When God would speak to people, dreams are a vehicle he uses. And sometimes God can't get our attention till we're asleep. If you know what I'm talking about, some of us are so busy and we're so active that it takes us going to sleep for God to be able to speak to us. Yeah, if you guys wonder why it looks like the sun is right in my face, one of my lights messed up and turned super, super bright and I don't really want to get up and go around and fix it while I'm live. So that's why it looks like there's a, you know, I'm staring right into the sun right now. Okay, let's take the next caller. Thank you so much for calling in. Please let me know your name and where you're calling in from. Hey, good night, bro. This is Amari. I'm calling from the Cornerstone Project in New York. How you doing, Amari? I'm good, man. How are you? Good. What's going on tonight? Uh, I'm, yo, I'm so happy that you made that Discord, man. I've built such a great community and family on Discord. Awesome. What's your name on, on Discord? There? Amari Cornerstone. Amari okay. Cornerstone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Cornerstone you. We, we talked when we were going back and forth with that guy, the... You know, the guy that was trying to word us up about deliverance. I think you were in there as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, yeah. man. Well, good talking um, to you. Yeah, we, we built so much of oh, a community, man. There's, 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 there's so much people in there with, like, good family and everything like that. We've been doing deliverance back to back, like, every so day. Awesome. So, awesome. You know, I'm just grateful for the Discord, man. Amari, do you I think just, everybody that's watching right now should join the Discord? Yes, everybody who's watching <laughs> should join it. Whether, there we go. I mean, I love well, it, man. I see well, you in there all the time, man. I love it. I see you in the deliverance rooms. You guys are always in there. It's just awesome what God is doing there. Yeah, man. I'm just grateful for, you know, the wisdom that God has given you, to be honest. Uh, awesome. Really, really why I was, I was calling, right, is because I know, uh, you know, a lot of people calling and they ask for prayer. But I just feel it in my heart that if I could just pray for you real quick. Yeah, man, Absolutely. All right. So, I mean, everybody that's listening, if you could just stretch your hands forth to the screen. So, um, right now, Father, I thank you. I thank you, O oh Lord, for your servant Isaiah. I thank you, O oh God, that the anointing that you've placed on his life. And I just thank you that you continue to give him wisdom straight from the throne room of heaven. And I ask, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you can increase his capacity, O oh God, for you. Increase, O oh God, even the places that he's in right now. Take him to lands, O oh God, and places that he's never been before to preach the gospel, O oh God. I thank you, O oh Lord, for even the uh, heart that you have for him, O oh God, that you've guarded his heart from even the naysayers and even the people who are talking uh, negative about him. And I ask, O oh Lord, that you continue to increase him in you, O oh Lord. And I know, O oh God, just by the fruit of his life, due to his marriage and due to the things that he's doing for your kingdom, I bless you oh god for even raising up someone like isaiah so i ask in the name of jesus that the oil will continue to flow and that the anointing will continue to flow and that he'll be able to con continue to prophesy that his gifts will bring him before great men and women oh god that he'll be able to even get to a place of mainstream stages to be able to preach the gospel lord i thank you for his life and i just pray that you continue to increase him in everything that he does oh lord even his hands and his feet bless them oh god as I seal them in the blood, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate that. Appreciate you, bro. And enjoy the rest of the uh, stream. Oh, I meant to say, bring back Zoom Deliverance, man. I miss it. <laughs> I know. I need to bring that back. I have uh, so many uh, limited days, so I'm trying to fit everything in, but we're definitely going to bring it back. Amen, bro. Thank you, well, bro. You know, I'm going to come off and let the other callers come on. I'm just, you know, happy to talk to you, man. Thank you, man. We'll see you in the Discord. All right. All right. God bless. Awesome. 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 Thank you guys for praying for me. I appreciate that. All right. Let's take our next caller. Thank you so much for calling in. Please let me know your name and where you're calling in from. Um, my name is Denise. I'm from Blintsville, Alabama. How are you, Denise? I'm doing good. I can't believe I finally got in. Awesome. I'm glad you got in. What's going on tonight? Um, well, I just want to start off by saying that I am I thank God every single day that I found you on TikTok. 
Um, you have taught me so much awesome. in the last year. Awesome. I appreciate that. And I'm glad you found us on TikTok. I'm glad our TikTok videos are not in vain. Yeah, um, I, re I really enjoy all of your stuff. Awesome. Um, Thanks so, so much. My, my question, I guess it's kind of a broad question that I have. So um, last year, my oldest sister and I found out we had some generational curses having to do with the Freemasons. And, um, well, we went through some deliverance and we've been doing really good, but recently I've been having dreams where, um, there's just like this presence hovering over me. And I, two of them I can remember very distinctly. The one was just a few days ago. Um, one of them, and I remember what these, and I knew they were demons. I remember exactly what they looked like. Um, mm. The last one had this big, long black horn with like broken sections that were blue. His face was blue. And I remember knowing because a few nights before my six year old daughter was being held down by her throat. She came into my bedroom at five o'clock in the morning telling me something was holding her down by her throat. Wow. She couldn't speak. She couldn't open her eyes. Um, but she told me, she said, Mama, all I could do was say in my mind was Jesus. She said, that's all I could do. I couldn't speak it because I couldn't open my mouth. So we prayed. And um, a couple of nights later is when I had the dream of the blue figure with the long horn. <laughs> and I remember I was so angry that I had this thing backed up into a corner and I had my hand on its face. And I remember trying to, I was trying so hard to shout the name Jesus and it would not come out of my mouth. Mm. And I woke up and my mouth was so dry and my husband was in the next room and he came in here and he goes, who was you fighting? And I said, man, I was fighting a demon. Wow. Like, there is a demon in this house and I don't know what it wants. I don't know how it got in here. Because we pray every single night as a family, we pray individually, we pray, we're reading our word, we're in church, we're doing all the things that I feel like we're supposed to be doing. But I feel like I've failed my daughter in some way because that Isaiah, you have kids that scared me. My yeah. children have never been touched in that way. And that scared me. And I don't know if it was a way for it to try to get back to me going through her I don't know what it is that I'm missing that allowing these things to come back in now when was this that this happened um this last one just happened last week the one where your daughter said it was choking her and in, in her sleep yes and then a couple of nights later is when the dream the dream that I had I had it backed into the corner and I remember, I remember vividly that dream. And I knew that was the demon that had its hands on her. The one that you I, had I a dream you were fact. attacking. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I you know, it's hard to say how demons get in. There's one thought where it's like, I know a lot of people teach this. A lot of pastors say, the devil can't touch you. You're untouchable. There's no war. You know, the devil, you know, you can't hit you. He can't come in your house. You're protected by God. You have the spirit of God in you. But then if you read the Bible, you're like, wait a minute. The devil is trying to kill the disciples like every chapter in Acts. Like everywhere they went, they were being attacked by people. Everywhere they went, demons were angry. Demons were mad. Those uproars in the synagogues, uproars on the streets, riots. So this idea that like demons can't attack us, to me, it's not a scriptural idea. And then you have stories like you where you're like, hey, I've been praying, I've been reading, I've been living holy. And like, how are these things still attacking? And the answer is, I don't know at times, right? Like, we don't know how these things get in. We don't know the full extent to the spiritual realm. Are these demons from the past? Are these demons that have been in your home and now they're mad that you're going after them and you're praying and you're reading and you're, you're probably more on fire right now than you've ever been, if I could just take an educated guess. And now it's like, man, now that I'm getting into this and I'm reading, I'm 
praying, I'm doing deliverances, like now these demons start showing up. Well, yeah, because they're mad now, right? Like you, they weren't mad before. The devil oftentimes doesn't attack those that serve him. So that's why a lot of people are like, well, I've never dealt with demonic attacks. It's like, well, yeah, you're on his team. That's why. But try joining God's side and start fighting against the enemy and watch the war break out. So that could be part of it as well. As you're going after God, these things are angry. They're trying to discourage you. They're trying to scare you. The problem is oftentimes this turns around on the devil and now you're just more fired up. You're like, devil, the more you attack my kids, the more I'm going to pray, the more I'm going to read, the more I'm going to speak the word of God. So the devil's always just, you know, things are always backfiring on him because he thinks he's gaining ground when really he's just putting more of a fire in us to do deliverance, to pray, to preach and all those things. But as far as how are they getting in? I mean, I know you've probably already racked your brain. Like, what are we watching? What are we doing? Is there anything happening? Um, those are things to think about. How many people live in your house right now? Is there a lot of you or is it just a couple of you? No, it's just me, my uh, husband and our two smallest kids. And we have three adult kids. They're in and out of the home. I mean, they don't live here, but they, they're in and out every now and then. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, they could be coming in with them, right? I mean, if demons are coming with us, they're in us, they have legal rights, they could be something that they're bringing in and out. It's just hard to say. I, I would just continue to do what you're doing, going to war. I mean, obviously you're in the night warring against these things. I mean, you're literally warring against them in your sleep as well. So I think you're in the right spot doing the right thing. I would just worry and continue to worry about yourself and say, hey, make sure we're not opening any doors. This is serious. These demons are attacking my daughter now. And you just continue to go to battle, continue to pray. You know, we have videos on like keeping demons out of your home. Me and Jenny Weaver did one on anointing your home and just keep fighting that good fight. Um, I have a video coming out this weekend on Disney. I don't know if you saw all the stuff leaking right now with Disney where they have this huge mm -hmm. trans agenda. Yeah. It's just mind blowing. I'm like, this is so crazy. The generation we live in where these companies are openly saying like our agenda is to do this to your kids it's just crazy but again just being careful of stuff because you know you never know what's going to come through what and what the devil's going to do so i would just stay vigilant like you are but it is hard it is hard to always point to what it is you know so would it be a good idea to get some anointing oil and then just anoint all around the house yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've done that Watch before, but would it be a good idea to, to do it again? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I always recommend people commanding things to leave, like going in the rooms, going through the house. I command you to go in Jesus' name. The same way we do deliverance on people, walk around the house, command these things to leave. Uh, demons could dwell in homes. Demons could dwell at places. Um, so definitely walking around, well, commanding. For the past week, for the past week, I've been literally, I've not slept hardly any in the past week. Wow. because something it, it feels like something's waking me up at like and it's usually in between the hours of three o'clock and three thirty. it every night it's that's when i when i've been woke up and i feel like i've just got to walk around my house and i'm walking around my house and i'm praying and i'm up for all hours not that's not me i love my sleep yeah, <laughs> I, like I feel it sleep, i feel that that's definitely not me to do stuff like that but for the past week, that is just what I have been pulled to do. And have you I'm watched tired. my old? I have a video. It's like a year and a half old called uh, "Getting Demons Out of Your Home." I believe it's called. Have you seen that video? I don't think I have. Yeah. So go on my channel and search up "Getting Demons Out of Your Home." Uh, the mods could probably post it in the chat. It's I did it like a year and a half ago, but that video still obviously rings true. Um, watch that video because I give some tips on how to get demons out of your home. They're just, you know, they're there to distract. They're there to bring fear. And so it's a real thing. People can say, well, well it's a real thing. Demons really do want to come bring fear scare you do this and do that i would also say if you haven't been through deliverance i don't know if you said you were you had you know going through deliverance as well because these could also be a result of something that you're going through a deliverance that you may need to take place i don't know that that would attack your daughter but it just sounds like something's coming against you and three and four three to four a.m is known as the witching hour basically witches believe it's the time that the supernatural's veil between the natural and the supernatural is the thinnest so at 3 a.m is the most demonic activity uh, in any time there is because that's the witching hour so like any witch that practices knows like 3 a.m is the time to do all your stuff right it's the most powerful at that time so 
that could be something why you're getting you're getting that as well. You know, you're getting, you're feeling that attack. It's just because that's an increased time where witches and people are doing. Not that it's a real principle, but the reality is they think it is, so they do it at that time. So that could be something why you're saying, man, 3 a.m. And a lot of you in the chat know it is like, hey, I got attacked at 3 a.m., 3 a.m., 3 a.m. That's usually when the demonic activity is at its highest because of what witches believe. Okay. Uh, have you been through uh, deliverance well, yourself yet? I have. It's, okay. been, it's been a little over a year. Um, and I'm telling you what, when the first time I ever went through deliverance, it was pretty radical. Like within like seconds of being touched by someone, I was throwing up in the floor. <laughs> wow. Awesome. <laughs> it was like, it was, yeah. And it felt, it, it was very, very freeing and you could feel like a whole bunch of weight lifted off of you. And I probably needed to, to have it done again. Um, I think you said that you have it done ever so often for yourself. I mean, it doesn't I hurt to have someone pray over you and say, hey, make sure nothing's there. You know what I mean? The only people that don't yeah. like that idea is religious people. They're like, I would never have a demon. It's like, okay, who do you think saying that? <laughs> who do you think wants you to think you never have a demon? Uh, obviously, the demon does. Yeah. So God would never be like, oh, you shouldn't go get prayer. Because really, I mean, I try to keep deliverance simple. Deliverance is prayer. I mean, it's getting prayer. That's what it is. That's, why you, that's how you cast out a demon. So to say like, oh man, I went to a deliverance. Awesome. You went and got prayer for freedom. It's, it's not a bad thing. I think we've mysticized it and, you know, made it this thing where it's like, oh, you got delivered. You must be some weird demon person. No, it's just, I got prayer. Like I want to get free. So I was just like, man, humble. We just got to stay humble, you know, and continue to get prayer, continue to fast. And I think you're on the right track. Okay. Well, I sure do appreciate you. And if you don't mind just saying a quick prayer for me, that would be awesome. Yeah. What was your name again? And definitely my daughter. Her name is Haven. My name is Denise. Haven and Denise. Father, we thank you so much for Haven and Denise. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in their lives. We thank you, Lord, that the devil's power has been broken today in Jesus' name. Satan, you have no power. You have no control over their home. You've been defeated in Jesus' name. We just pray, Lord, your spirit. We pray your anointing. We pray, Father, your ministering angels, Lord. We ask you to send them to that home for Denise and Hayden, God, that they would just camp around that house. They'd be in protection. Lord, your word says that the angels encamp those that fear you, God, encamp those that serve you that they are ministering spirits. So Father, send your ministering spirits to be with her, to be with her kids, to be with her home. God, do what only you can do tonight. In Jesus' name, every demonic contract, every demonic assignment, every plan of the enemy is broken in Jesus' name. Satan, you are a loser and a liar and we break your power now in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in her life and her husband and her children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, and thank you for everything that you do. Awesome. I've, I've just learned so much from you over the past year, and I just you are definitely a godsend for me and my family. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the encouragement, and thank you for calling in. And I hope to meet you. Uh, did you say Alabama? Yes. When yes, I get out to Alabama to get someday. To Alabama soon. I'll get out there someday. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. All right. God bless. All right, guys, we have five people in the waiting room, okay? We already had like seven or eight people drop out of the waiting room. So we're going to see. We're going to go through these people, see what happens here, all right? Everyone just, the, the lines are full as of now. I do have stuff I got to do tonight, and I'm getting up in the morning to go to Arizona, and I still have videos to record and stuff. So I got a busy night as well. So I won't go like two, three hours, but we'll take these at least these five people here. Thank you so much for calling in. Please let me know your name and where you're calling in from. We'll give at least these five people. Brianna Bernard. How are you? Detroit, Michigan. Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. What's going on tonight? Nothing much. I can't complain. I'm so happy I actually found you on YouTube. So thank God for that. Awesome. When was that? Um, that's actually been, been like a couple years. I've been watching your uh, awesome. Videos. So cool. I think I'm so excited about that. I really just I think I just call for prayer because. I've been having like a lot of uh, warfare, like in dreams, and I'm just trying to figure out what God is really, he's like removing a lot of people out of my life, and it happened to be like a best friend of mine, and I had a dream about her, and I just wanted to allow him to prune the branches that needs to be gone, because I'm just trying to keep going forward. So I think prayer would be the best, because sometimes I get confused, 
And I don't want to doubt what God tells me because sometimes it's crazy. You don't want to believe that your best friend is not really your friend. <laughs> yeah, so you feel like God is pruning some friends from your life right now? Yes, definitely pruning them. Definitely well, I mean, that's them. a good thing, right? Because, you know, people say, well, if you want to see your future, look at your friends. So it hurts, but pruning always hurts. But it's to produce more fruit. So that's not a bad thing. But let's definitely pray for you tonight. Is there anything else besides that you need prayer for? Any sickness in your body or anything like that? No, sir, just that and just dealing with the doubt. Other than that, that's it, because that sometimes gets me. Other than that, I'm on fire. I'll say what God tells me to say, goes where he tells me to go. But it's that, that I don't want to have that double mind in, it, in my mind, that yeah. battle in my mind. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Father, I thank you so much for my sister. Lord, I just pray tonight, Father, that you would remove all unbelief, God, any unbelief in her heart, any double mindedness. We pray tonight, Lord, that you would remove it, that Father, you would give her a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit, that Lord, you just release your power over her, your fire over her, your anointing over her. Father, we pray that you would do what only you can do, that Lord, you'd bring clarity, you'd bring revelation, you'd give her new dreams, new vision. I just pray, God, a new passion for you a passion for your word, a passion for prayer, a passion for holiness. Father, even as you're pruning her from these dead branches, these people around her that are sucking the life out of her, that aren't bringing her life, that are bringing confusion, that are bringing her down, that are tra trying to bring her back to past things she used to do. I just thank you, Lord, that you're doing that. Father, I just pray that you would right now give her strength through this time, remove all confusion in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you would speak to her through your word, that you would speak clearly to her, in Jesus' name, Father, do what only you can do today in Jesus' name. Baptize her in your Holy Spirit and fire. Use her mighty for your honor, your glory. We cancel every attack, every assignment, every plan that the enemy has. We cancel it in Jesus' name. We take authority over every demonic spirit. You have no power. You have no place. The Lord rebukes you. We bind you, Satan. We command you to go in Jesus' name. You have no authority. The Lord rebukes you, Satan. You must go in Jesus' name. We just pray freedom right now. We pray clarity right now. We pray breakthrough right now. And we just pray, Lord, that you'd baptize her in the Holy Spirit and fire. In Jesus' name, Father, just comfort her, bring rest, bring peace. Father, remove all confusion, remove all chaos. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would do what only you can do today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you so much for calling amen. in. I hope to meet you one day. Yes, I'm so excited. And God bless you. God bless the ministry. I thank God for your obedience. Awesome. I definitely watch all of your videos. I share you and I thank you. Thank you for being diligent in God's kingdom and his work. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Bye-bye. Right. Good night. God, God bless. bless you. God, good night. God bless. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Here we go. We are going to take Angelica... You are the next caller. Just once I take you guys, mute me in the background, turn your mic on, turn the phone on. I get that a lot of you put me down and I'm on, you know, waiting because you're waiting an hour. And so that's totally cool that it takes some time. Um, Angelica is connecting through Zoom. And how are you, Angelica? A lot of you put me down. Hi, I'm doing good. Can you I'm hear on, me? You know, waiting, yeah, waiting. I hear you. I hear myself in the background. I'll give you a second. Okay, to give mute me it. one second. Yeah, no I'm worries. Okay. I, gotta get picked. I go to church with you and Alyssa. Oh, <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, um, I guess my question, it's kind of simple, just what are some basics you do for your kids, like, as in, like, getting them closer to God? I mean, my baby, she's only a year old, but I know you can never, there's never a time where you could start too early, you know? Yeah, I mean, at one year old, I, it's, first of all, I commend you for thinking about it. That's a great thing to start saying, hey, I'm thinking about this. I'm praying about this. I want to see this. Obviously, we started praying for our kids when I, I in, when they're in my wife's womb. Lord, please yeah. use them for your kingdom. All the stuff you've been doing. At one years old, I mean, you're just praying for them, right? You're just praying, mm -hmm. pouring into them. You know, obviously, you don't want to put a one year old watching something crazy or doing something crazy. But right now, you're <laughs> yeah. at a time where it's just prayer, praying and fasting. And as they get older, I have actually a video coming out this weekend where I'm going to reiterate seven steps to help people like raising their kids in Christ. And yeah. I did that on the video with me and Jenny when we talked about exposing um, what was going on yeah. with that Turning Red movie. And yeah, some of the simple so yeah, simple things is like, hey, sharing 
God, sharing your faith with them, talking about God in your home, inviting the Holy Spirit into your home, um, praying with them, obviously, a, t- teaching them the word, doing devotions at their level, sharing your testimony when they're old enough to, right? You know, you don't want to be telling yeah. your two-year-old, hey, you know, mommy was a drug addict, and you know, but sharing your testimony with them. Those are just <laughs> yeah. simple things. But I think for you, at one is just continuing to be the example. And then also like, I think people don't realize when we're serving God and we have children, we're not just serving God for us. It's, it's easy as Christians, yeah, to say like, I'm tired, I'm weary, or you have these thoughts of people say I'm battling, you know, maybe I should go back to the world or maybe I should be less on fire. And in my mind, I'm like, you can't afford to do that. You have yeah. children, like fight for your kids. And there was an yeah, old saying, on this. yeah, there was an old saying the prophets used to say was like, what about your children? So when the children of Israel wanted to quit, the people of God wanted to quit, the prophets would say, if you quit, what's going to happen to the next generation? So it's mm-hmm. like, man, when we're praying, when we're at church, when we're fasting, whatever I do for God, whether I'm on this live stream, I'm sowing spiritually into an inheritance for my kids. Like I'm leading something for them. Maybe they don't understand it. You know, maybe they're not watching all my streams or they're not super engaged with it, but I'm sowing something. Like I'm saying, okay, yeah. Lord, I'm working for you. I know that as I do your work, you're gonna work on my behalf for my children. As I sow into your people, you're sowing also into my children. So that's yeah. another thing that I think parents don't think about when it comes to, hey man, I'm not just praising for me. I'm praising to set an example for my kids. I'm not just pr- having a prayer meeting for me. I'm doing it because my kids need it. Like they need me, even if they're one. Like your daughter needs you to live for God. She needs yeah. you to be in prayer. She needs you to know the word. She needs you to be radical and to do all the things that you're doing because you know she's gonna grow up and it's going to matter. Like spiritually it's going to matter and and so yeah i mean again some of these steps are really really practical those are some things you can Mm do with the one-year-old don't be all like you know feel a super big burden like oh man i got to do this and this and this and this you definitely have time as she starts talking understanding things um to do more but it's a really exciting time for you and just keep keep on that straight and narrow road yeah thank you um and then like for would you think i mean like for deliverance for a like a, like a one and a half year old do you I mean not that do you suggest it because like she doesn't like necessarily show like oh she needs deliverance but like I do know that when she was in my womb I was still in the world listening to worldly music so like I do pray for her myself and try to like do deliverance on her myself yeah and I wouldn't I worry that- about yeah I wouldn't worry about a, a one-year-old a one and a half year old um, I would start worrying if they start talking and they're saying some crazy stuff and doing some crazy yeah. stuff out of character and they're growling at you and acting a certain way, <laughs> yeah. um, which a lot of kids do. Like there's people in the chat that like my kid, you know, will literally manifest when I'm telling them to do something. Oh, so yeah, that's when I would worry right now. I would definitely not worry. Um, you definitely have nothing to worry about. But again, as she gets older, that would be something to think about. But I think right now mm-hmm. you're totally good. And I think you're, you know, just asking that shows that you're humble, your motives are pure, but I wouldn't even worry right now. I just keep doing what you're doing. Okay, thank you so much. And then I just also want to say, yeah, like everyone else is always saying, like, you know, thank you for your obedience, because, like, I I had gotten to touch with Marcella through your deliverance map, and like it just wow, completely, that's awesome. Like God really like moves through. It's just so crazy, you know. Awesome. Well, hey, listen, come up to me at church one of these days. Say, hey, I called I, into your show. Yeah, I talk to Alyssa sometimes at church. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, she'll be there Sunday. I'm going to be in Arizona Sunday, but I'll be there next Sunday. So definitely next Sunday, if you're in the same service, come up to me and say, hey, I called you in. How's it going? Just so I could put a, a face to your name. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for calling in. All right, bye. God bless. Awesome. Love to have the support. Someone from my own church calling. I love that. It's just, it's awesome to see some of you guys from Lifesong in the chat. It's encouraging to me um, when you guys are supporting, you know, support local. Amen. (laughs) All right. We got a couple more here. We're going to take. Thank you so much for calling in. Please let me know your name and where you're calling in from. Hello. My name is Thomas and I'm from Miami. How are you, Thomas? Doing good. Uh, Good. What's going on? Yeah, so today I had a dream, right, where I saw, like, a black shadow in the sky, and I was rebuking it, and I woke up rebuking it. So my question is, is my spiritual eyes are open? Um, I mean, in a dream, it's hard to say, because dreams, you know, have we, as we've said before, it can be from the Holy Spirit, a demonic spirit, or your own human spirit, your own flesh can have these types of dreams. So I don't know if that would mean your spiritual eyes are open if you have a dream. What I've come to find when it comes to, like, 
seeing in the spirit, right? Which is like a discerning of spirits gift. There's no gift to like see in the spirit. It's part of discerning spirit. So being able to like see whether it's a demonic spirit, an angelic spirit. I've often realized like for me, it happens when I minister to people. So like, I don't see demons everywhere. I don't just like walk to the mall and see demons everywhere. For me, when I'm ministering to people, God will open my eyes and show me and I'll discern something in the spiritual realm. So for example, say I'm praying for somebody and all of a sudden I'll see a dark image over them or I'll see like a demonic face over them or I'll see something over their head. Or if I'm preaching, sometimes I'll see like a dark shadow over somebody. So it's not like me seeing demons and stuff everywhere all the time. When I first got saved, that happened to me and it was very intense and I was like Lord stop this right and then I realized like oh I was discerning spirits I didn't know what it was and as I've developed and learned I realized okay these are gifts for ministry to build up the body of Christ so that's how I often function in that gift but everybody has a different experience you know it's not just one thing to say oh this is spiritual eyes so I don't want to tell you oh that means your eyes aren't open but what I found is it's not just like, oh, my spiritual eyes are open and I'm always seeing in the spirit. It's more like it's a, it's a discerning of spirits gift that we're able to use while ministering to people. Because it is a spiritual gift according to 1 Corinthians 12. Um, discerning of spirits, which would be seeing in the spirit, would be like a spiritual gift. But it's not like a all the time, 24-7. I mean, that would be exhausting. I don't know anyone that's ever had that where it's just 24-7 yeah. seeing in the spirit. But it could be God showing you something in your dream. It could be God opening up your eyes um, in your dream or showing you something that you need to pray against. Um, but the, again, and I always want to say this, and I don't want to over-spiritualize it, dreams are hard to say because you could watch say um, a movie about a crime before bed, a crime documentary. And then you could have a, a dream that night of you killing somebody. And it's like, man, I had this demonic dream. It's like, oh, well, not, not really. You watched a crime documentary before bed. Your own spirit was taking that in and you're dreaming that's, you know, that's like processing in your mind still as you're asleep. So sometimes we have these dreams where we're like, oh, that must have been a, a demon or God when really it was your own human spirit because something you were watching or something you were doing. So that could be something to think about as well. True, true. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for calling in tonight. Um, can you do a short prayer for me? Yeah, absolutely. What did you need prayer for? Um, to be filled filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, absolutely. What was your name again? Thomas, Thomas Charles. Thomas, Father, I thank you so much for yeah. Thomas, Lord, for what you're doing in his life. And Father, I thank you that your word says that if we ask for something good, you won't give us something bad. And Lord, I thank you that your word says to ask for the Holy Spirit and you'll give it to us. Tonight, Father, we ask for Thomas, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon our brother, that you would fill him with power, that rivers of living water would begin to flow through him and out of him, God. Your word says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So Father, fill us with your living water. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can walk and be more like you. Today, Father, I pray, baptize Thomas in the Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name, living water to flow right now. I pray, Lord, that every attack of the enemy, every trial, every, all confusion, God, even anything he might be seeing in his dreams he's confused about, I pray, Lord, that you would break this off of him right now and that, Father, you would just lead him in the paths of righteousness. That, Lord, you'd lead him into a repented lifestyle, God, that he would walk in your spirit. Lord, just fill him right now with the Holy Ghost and power as you did in, in Pentecost, Father, as you did in the book of Acts multiple times. I pray, Lord, for a fresh outpouring and a fresh filling over him right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, brother. God bless you, brother. Thanks for calling in. All right. Take care. We are getting through a lot of people. I think this might be a record tonight. I don't know, but we're an hour in and we've gotten through. Somebody's keeping track. That was our eighth or ninth person. We got two more here. Um, and then we're going to hang out and answer some questions in the chat and talk to the chat here for a little bit. But let's take these last two. Thank you so much for calling in. Please let me know your name and where you're calling in from. Yes. Hi, Isaiah. My name's Amber, and I'm calling from Southwest Virginia. Awesome. Thank you, Amber, for calling. What's going on tonight? You know, um, I had a question. So three years ago, I was an unbeliever. And I was in witchcraft, went to my room, prayed. The Lord showed up in a mighty way and delivered me. Wow. And Come on. That's amazing. <laughs> yep. Glory to God. And awesome. then I was one of those people that was running before learning how to walk. Like I wanted to tell everybody they had something in them, right? Like you can yeah. get set free. And I ended up going through and doing a deliverance with my cousin and the demonic transfer three years ago. Like I've been in deliverance 
now for three years, but something jumped in my ear. I'm telling you, I say it took over my body for like three days. I had the fight and spirit and the battle was intense. Is that because we're on the same bloodline or? And that was while you were doing deliverance on her? Yeah, that was while I was doing deliverance on her. So she was in California. We were on the phone. Okay. Um, I was in Virginia. So I was like, let's go for this. And literally I felt it come through the phone. Wow. Now, what, were you commanding it to go somewhere? Were you saying go to the abyss, go to the pit? What were what was the thing? What were you praying when that happened? Like, what were, were you commanding the demon to do? Okay, so it told me I couldn't have her that she was mine. That's what the demon had said. You can't have her. She's mine. And I said, you have to go now in Jesus name. And it screamed and I literally felt it go through. So I didn't send it to the pit yet. It was too late because it yeah. had already went through my, <laughs> my ear. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I would say that one thing that could have happened, I don't know if this is the case. Again, I can't say like exactly, this is exactly what happened there would be that right. you had something there still that you need deliverance from. And that demon interacted with the demon you had, which is not uncommon when people need deliverance still there maybe there's a demon hiding maybe there's a demon from the past and they cast demons out of someone else and they'll say man i was casting demons out of the person and i started getting my heart racing i got a stomach ache. i felt something come into me or jump on me and in reality oftentimes not every time again i don't you know i can't say definitively all these right. things that are supernatural but oftentimes it's that demon interacting with the demon that's inside of you um there's this you know they work in a network so it's not like they can't communicate in people and other people so it could have been that there was something still in you from your past that was like okay. angered or activated or somehow that demon made that demon mad and you felt that in your ear um i don't know again i i know i know what i don't want to say religious people because i overuse that term sometimes right. but i know what like the average pastor would say and they'd be like that can't happen demons can't jump off and i teach that i teach Usually demons don't jump out of one person onto another because we command them to go to the abyss, but demons are legalistic in the sense that when you tell them to do something, they'll do what, what you say. So if you say, come out, they'll come out. But if you don't tell them where to go, they're legalistic. You know, it's like a, it's like a courtroom. So if, if you say come out, the demon could come out and possibly go into somebody else. So that's why I don't want to say like that that didn't happen to you. Or that can't happen because it, it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility. Right. It's just not usual. But I have heard stories of this, right? Um, I have heard people say I was doing deliverance and I, Isaiah, I, didn't, I know you tell me that it can't, hap can't happen but a demon jumped off the person into me. So I don't believe like if you're in a room, a demon's gonna jump out of her and then go jump into a random kid in the room. Cause Jesus right. did do deliverance in public. Acts chapter eight, Philip did deliverances in public. And if that was the case, I don't think they would be doing them in public cause the demons would be just coming out of one person going into another person. We always teach like we take them out of circulation by sending them to the pit. Um, in the book of Mark, the demon said, don't send us to the abyss, to the deep, which is the pit. So it's like, if the demons don't wanna go there, it's, it's probably a good place to send them just because scripture doesn't explicitly say where we should tell them to go. Um, it doesn't give us that detail. So that's why we do that. But again, there are certain circumstances that are just inexplainable and it's not anti scripture to say that can't right. happen. Like it's, it's not against scripture to say, oh, that can't, and it, it could be possible. And there could be a family dynamic. Again, I don't ever want to claim to know it all. There could be some type of connection with you and your cousin you said it was. Mm -hmm. There could be a yeah, family dynamic we were, there as well. We were super, super close. So when this had happened, I've been blessed to, to work for the Lord in over 40 deliverances so since and nothing has That's ever- That's awesome done that to me do you think there could have been like an unhealthy soul tie that you guys had from like your past your past life and when i say your past life i don't mean reincarnation i mean your past life before you were a christian <laughs> yeah so we've been connected ever since we were six months apart her mom okay. was murdered like most of our family line has been murdered and you know wow. it's been rough, but fight. we both found Jesus together. So after that, she set free. I wasn't for a few days, but I just went to the Lord and I battled and that was it. And she, when did she become a believer? Was she always a believer or? No, no, no. I say I prayed for her for three years and she just gave her life to the Lord. Um, two months ago, she wow. had a salvation of souls image come to her on an airplane. She's a flight attendant and gave her whole life to the Lord. That's amazing. And this happened right after that. 
Mm-hmm. Now, do you feel like there could have been something still in you that you never got delivered from or could have been still lurking that could have like activated what she was going through? That demon could have somehow communicated what was in you and made this uh, manifestation happen? Or do you feel like, no, I'm trust me, Isaiah, I got I'm fully delivered like that thing jumped into me. Isaiah, I'm never fully delivered. It's three years and I'm asking the Lord for prayer and deliverance every single day to keep yeah. me clean. So I honestly couldn't answer that. But yeah. um I always need freedom. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread, deliver us from evil. Like that's a daily prayer, right? People don't realize like right. that's a, the Lord deliver us from evil. That's, we pray that every day. Um, so yeah, that, that could have been something. But again, I don't want to discredit your experience and say, well, this wasn't possible because <laughs> a lot of pastors do that. And to me, it hurts people. Like how are you going to tell someone that, that didn't happen to them when it did, it, it really did happen. But yeah, definitely pray into that. Um, and then continue to go through deliverance as you have. Now, after that happened, let me ask you one last question. When you felt like that thing jumped into you, did you start experiencing like symptoms of being demonized or anything like that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I lived in this little cabin, like worse than the Beverly Hillbillies. I have a big story that I'm not going into, but I was in the kitchen and every time I'd walk in where I delivered her, my hair would stand up on my head mm. and I would get these chill bumps through my body that were just ungodly. So I'd run outside and be like, okay, Lord, I'm going to go back in there and I'm going to, you know, pray this thing out. Then I'd walk back in, my hair would stand back up. I'd run outside, come back in until finally I was like, okay, Lord, we got to fight. Let's go. And I finally was able to, to beat it by the power of prayer. Yeah, I mean, you could be getting backlash too, right? I was like, I told the caller earlier, a lot of pastors don't agree with me on this. And they say, you know, you can never be attacked. Like the devil's not going to ever attack you. He has no legal right to you and all that. And there's, there's truth to an extent. But if that was the case, why is Paul saying put on the armor so you can stand against the fiery right. darts of the devil? Like, no, Paul, we don't need armor. We can never get attacked. <laughs> armor is to prevent us from being attacked, from being hurt or wounded when we are attacked. And then he says so that you can stand in that day. So, yeah, I mean, there are real attacks and this could, you know, be some backlash you're facing because you're preaching to your cousin, you're doing deliverance on her, like the devil's obviously mad. So there could be some backlash that you're going through as well there. Amen. Well, well I appreciate everything that you shared with me. Thank you so much for calling in. Absolutely. God bless you, Isaiah, and thank you so much for everything you do for all of us watching and everyone that's going to watch you in the future. I thank you so much. I hope to see you in the chat, okay? All right. Thank you. All right. God bless. Take care. God bless. Bye. Really good questions, guys. I never want to discredit not credit, not just her, but anybody's experience. I think we have so much in the church of experience doesn't matter and that didn't happen to you. That's not real. Like I know so many pastors that will say that didn't happen to you. That can't happen. That's not real. That's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. You know, they always go to that. That's not in the Bible. Yeah. A lot of the stuff they do is not in the Bible, but we pick and choose for me. I'm like, Hey, let's, let's not discredit people. Let's not condemn people. Um, that that's definitely possible. Why, why is that not possible is the question. So there's a lot of things like we did a new age video for an hour and a half on Tuesday. None of those, a lot of those practices we talked about were not in the Bible, but doesn't make them less real. There was no Ouija boards in the Bible, but the Ouija board is a real vehicle. The devil uses to demonize people. So we're not going to find all every single thing. We know the Bible is not exhaustive. It doesn't give us every single detail, every single name, every single practice, every single strategy. And I think it's an error to say if it's not there, it's not real because uh, your cell phone's not there and your cell phone's definitely real. So I, again, I think that I know that's not a very good comparison to say, well, cell phone's not in the Bible. That isn't the same thing. But yeah, there's a lot of things we don't see in scripture. John said, if everything Jesus did was in the Bible, the world would not have enough room to contain it. So you know, we're not talking about an encyclopedia that has every single detail, every supernatural experience. Like God is still moving. We are still at war and things happen in war that are a lot of times inexplainable. And I don't want to get on here and pretend to know all of this and say, this is exactly why this happened to you. I'm, I'm humble, humbly coming to here saying, I'm not sure this could be what I think it could be for my experience. But again, I can't give you a definitive this is exactly what it is. So I think all of us need to remain in humility and just be like, okay, we don't know it all. We're all learning. We're all experiencing. And, and this is, you know, some of these experiences are just straight up new for us. Okay. Last caller here an hour and 10 minutes in we're doing this last caller here. They're joining in zoom user, zoom user. Whenever you hear me, go ahead and turn your mic on. Make sure you like the video almost at 1000 likes.
So go ahead and hit the like button if you haven't, if you're watching on YouTube. Oh, they hung up. No! Zoom user. I don't know who you are because your name was literally Zoom, Zoom user. But why did you hang up, man? That feels so bad. And I can't get you back in because I don't know who you are. Your name is Zoom user. All right, we're going to talk to the chat here, guys. If you want to shotgun me some questions, you can. I'm sorry, Zoom user. You exited out, not me. I accepted you into my call. And for whatever reason, it exited out here. So um, if you guys want to give, you can. The links are there. I want to say huge shout out to Whitney Nylon. Thank you so much for that very, very, very generous donation. She said, the Holy Spirit said to send you this amount. Not sure if it means anything to you. Thank you for all you do. You're such a strong inspiration in the body of Christ. Whitney Nylon, thank you so, so much. Very generous, major. Again, we couldn't do this without people like you crowdfunding. If you guys don't know what crowdfunding means, it means literally you guys fund us. That's that's crowdfunding. We were able to do this free and you guys are able to support us so we don't have to charge and, you know, sell it. Um, Christina, thank you. Say God bless you for the stream. Perla Castaneda, thank you. David Cano, thank you. Sandy D, thank you. Parla, thank you. Hannah Scott says, I'm de uh, declaring healing in G over me in Jesus' name. And I got your prayer request. Thank you, Hannah Scott. All right, chat. Um, I'm be going to Arizona in the morning and then I will be, hold on, let me switch this up. I will be preaching Sunday morning in Arizona. So I'm filming some more videos tonight and then I'll be in Arizona T uh, tomorrow morning I'll leave I'll get there in the afternoon I'll preach Sunday morning I'll come back we stream Monday Tuesday we have Dr. Michael Brown we're gonna be talking about post-tribulation guys I know it might be a little bit weird for doing this but here's the thing I want to be as scriptural as possible if I'm preaching pre-tribulation rapture and post-tribulation is, is a more biblical worldview or a biblical view then I am not going to be arrogant and say no it's pre-trib I'm going to humble myself and say hey guys I think I'm wrong here. I'm post-trib now. I have no problem doing that. Again, this is about continuing to stay humble. So Dr. Michael Brown, who's a scholar, a theologian, he's written over 40 books. I mean, this guy is a man of God. He's charismatic. He, I wrote him and literally within an hour, he responded and said, let's do it. I invited him on Tuesday and I'm going to literally just give him my arguments. Okay. I'm going to literally get the arguments from the video I made and say, all right, Dr. Michael Brown, destroy, destroy these arguments, uh, destroy these arguments. So a few weeks ago, I told you guys, I want to invite him on and basically have him prove me wrong. Not a debate. I don't want to debate at all. I just literally want to give him these arguments and, and I know he's going to tear them apart, <laughs> which is totally okay. Right? Like again, we got to stay humble. And then I'm going to, uh, make a decision whether you know again these are not salvation issues these are secondary issues uh, people always say believe for pre-trib but plan for post-trib but we'll see we'll see i've watched some of his stuff not a lot of his post-trib because i want to keep it fresh i popped into vlad stream but i didn't watch the stream because I, again i want it to be fresh for me as we talk to him but he's an absolute legend tuesday is going to be huge and so i appreciate all of you guys to be there it's going to be really 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 good okay if you're not in the discord join the discord if you want to give, you can. There's Venmo, there's PayPal, there's all those if you want to give in tonight's stream. Whitney, thank you so much for that super, super, super generous donation. Thank you. And again, these are not salvation issues. So if you stay pre-trib, if you change the post-trib, it doesn't matter. It's not going to affect your salvation. Um, but again, I want to make sure because I have an influence and an audience that I am true to. And also I have a video. Should I even say it? I guess you'll have to wait for this weekend. I'm not going to give away all the videos I have coming this weekend, but... Um, I have a video coming out this weekend, which is kind of like an apology video, but not really. Well, you'll, you'll, you'll just have to watch it, but I'll, I'll keep reiterating that I want to make sure that I always stay in a place of humility. I don't want to get any pride. I don't want to ever get where no one can tell me anything. No one can teach me. No one can. I'm always open saying, Hey, show me in the Bible. I want to make sure that I'm moldable, teachable. I don't, I don't want to become arrogant at all and think I have the right answers on everything. And if you didn't know, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you guys a little secret. Don't tell anybody but not one of your favorite teachers knows everything. So I know that I know that's a revelation for some of you, but not none, not one Bible teacher knows everything and has everything right. Just just in case you didn't know. Okay, let me read some of these. What kind of protection do you use when oh man, doing deliverance? Is it acceptable to summon angels to protect yourself? Good question, Rivers. What kind of protection before deliverance? I always put on the armor of God. Very simple pray the armor of God on. I have a video on that. Um, I like to do a fast before deliverance. Some people don't, some people do. I like to. And then uh, putting on the armor and you can ask God to send angels to protect you. Absolutely. We don't command angels. We don't summon angels, but we can ask the father to send his angels to protect us during deliverance. Absolutely. Guys, you can pray at any time. Father's 
send your angels to protect me. You can ask the Lord to do that anytime. Now it's God who chooses what he wants to do, but it's definitely not a wrong prayer to pray. Your dork, Isaiah, it's great. Thank you, Danielle. I appreciate that. Uh, what's your experience with the demon of anorexia? Why does it want me? I'm struggling and I'm only 14. It is a real spirit. Okay, I'll tell you right now, anorexia eating disorders, I've, I've seen those spirits cast out. I've seen them talk by name. I've seen people get delivered of them. And so if you're 14 and you're dealing with that, go to your parents, ask them to bring you to someone to get delivered. Um, Aaliyah Smith, I see you in the chat here. Definitely you can get delivered from it. I've seen people do it. Hang in there. God wants to deliver you. Check out our map. Talk to your parents and get connected with someone for deliverance. Bezzy, thank you for the generous donation. Said so thank you for all you do. God bless you and your family. Please, the Discord is amazing. Oh, P.S. Bezzy, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Bezzy. I appreciate you. Amy Harris, thank you. Said God bless Isaiah. The Discord is on fire. It's always on fire, okay? It's always on fire, but yes, the Discord is awesome. I'm glad you guys are really enjoying it and you guys are in there using it. I didn't know how it was going to go. I didn't know if we were going to even keep the Discord. So it's been going good. Thank you to my mods. I will be modding more people soon. As it grows, we do need more mods. I have right now 188 messages that I'm working through. So guys, please, please be patient with me. I know you guys are like, you haven't got to my message. Do you hate me? Guys, please be patient with me as I'm patient with you. I, I'm one person. I can't get to every single person. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So just be patient with me, okay? But I am on Discord this weekend on Saturday. Tomorrow, I'm going to be going through a bunch of messages. That's literally something I have on my calendar. So be, be patient with me. How do I help my brothers in Santeria who won't talk to me now? Just keep praying for him. I wish I had this magic formula. There's no magic formula. Keep praying for him. Keep praying for him. Isaiah Rival for mod. I'll check your message, bro. If you message me to be a mod, I got you. I'll check it, okay? Thousand years of peace, Satan will be in the pit. Yes. How do I get into Discord? Uh, go to discord.gg slash Isaiah Saldivar. If you guys are wondering why you can't type in Discord, you need to verify your email. That's so that we don't have a bunch of bots in there, okay? Cornerstone Amari for Discord mod. I would probably mod him if he wants to message me and ask for mod. Oh, he said, can I be a mod? Yeah, man, I'll mod you. I see you in there. I've talked to you now on the phone and I've, I've talked to you in Discord as well. Um, I'll definitely mod you. Actually, if you're in the general chat, just type something and I'll mod you right now. All right, this is not mod application time. What church do you attend? Life Song Church in Stockton, California. Um, Bill Weas will be there this month and then I'll be preaching next month. I'll be in May preaching there. But yeah, go ahead and type something in the Discord general chat. By the way, guys, I'm always in the general chat. If you wondered where I'm at, I'm in the general chat. I pretty much stay in the general chat and then I'll go in voice chats once in a while. I ch the reason why I don't jump into voice chats a lot is because I don't want to ruin it. When you guys are talking and doing deliverance, I don't want to get in there and be like, everyone's like, hey, Isaiah, and then I, st I steal the call. You know what I'm saying? I want to give you guys room to build community and all that. A mod is a moderator. So Cornerstone, type something in the general chat of Discord, all right, man? And I'll mod you. How do you deal with controlling religious parents? Continue to honor them and stay humble and pray for them. Is the VAXX the mark of the beast? No, it's not. Is it part of conditioning? Probably, but it's not the mark of the beast. Um, Landon, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is not hearing blasphemous thoughts. The blasphemy of the Holy Spirit in its original context, if you just read the verse and don't put any, any, any of your experience into it, is when you call deliverance, the casting out of demons, demonic. When you say what God is doing, something spiritual like deliverance is demonic, that's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit because you're blaspheming what God is doing. So if you read the verse in context, that's what it is. So if you're getting thoughts of blasphemy, you probably need deliverance. It's pro you're probably not blaspheming the Holy Spirit. All right, I got you, mod. There you go, bro. Amari, there you go. There's a mod chat if you need to go in there and ask questions about modding because I don't have time to message you right now, but there you go. I'm trying to read YouTube and Discord and Facebook, guys. So bear with me. Is a red bracelet witchcraft? Not necessarily. Um, Can you explain the thousand year reign? I have a video on the channel. I can't explain it quickly, but I have a video on the channel of the thousand year reign. So go look that up on my channel. Just use the search bar. Jared Herrera, thank you. So God bless you, Isaiah. Thanks for your awesome video tonight. It was interesting. Always stay blessed, fam. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, Jared Herrera. I appreciate you, man. 
How do I know if someone I know has a demon? I just did a video on how to spot a demon. 10 symptoms of having a demon. So go watch that if you want to know. Discord link, it's in the description and pinned in the comments. Literally, guys, everything you need is pinned in the comments. Just click the link, uh, click the expander, and it'll expand and, and show you, okay? The red bracelet with a dot, I'm not familiar. I thought you, you just said red bracelet. Are people in hell right now? Yes. What seminary school did you graduate from? It was called Kingdom Covenant Leadership Institute, KCLI. And I have a degree in theology and it's a real, um, it was a real degree. It's not like a certification. It was actually a real degree. If you guys don't know the way um, degrees work or college, Bible colleges work, to get accredited, you have to like have certain courses for a theology degree. You can't just make a Bible college and say, oh, we're accredited. To officially get accredited, it has to pass a certain amount of standard of like theology. So yeah, it's not like a certificate I got from like the corner or online. Stop ignoring us on YouTube, Isaiah. Just kidding. I got you, Nancy. I'm reading. I'm reading you right now. I'm, I'm reading your thing there. I, even if I don't respond, it doesn't mean I didn't read it. Is deja vu biblical? There's no reference of deja vu in the Bible. And there's no, I can't give you an explanation because I don't know what it is. Are people in heaven right now? Yes. How do you know if the Holy Spirit's speaking? I have a video on the ways God speaks if you want to check that out. Are vision boards okay? I've researched vision boards. There's nothing inherently demonic about them. So if you have a board on your wall, if you're talking about the vision board I'm talking about and the board says, these are my goals I want to get done, there's nothing demonic about that. But yes, if you're doing like manifestation and law of attraction, that's demonic. But vision boards, in the, in, if you just do them the way they are made to do, there's nothing demonic about them. Again, I'm talking about when you have a board saying, these are my goals. There's nothing wrong. It's like putting a post-it up, note up and saying, I want to, you know, reach this many or I want to do this for God. There's nothing wrong with a poster saying that. What happens when someone dies, they stand before God in judgment. What does it mean when you see the same person called Paul in a dream? I'm not sure, Christina. How do you stop people from astral projecting into your house? Uh, prayer. Pleading the blood over your home, anointing your doorways. Those are ways that you can help. But um, the only way someone can astral project, project into your house is if they have a legal right. So. Does Satan go back to hell after he's let out after a thousand years? Yes, video kitten. Satan will get after the thousand year reign will get chained up with an unbreakable chain and thrown in the lake of fire where he will be tormented day and night for all of eternity. So yeah, Satan one day will burn in the lake of fire for all of eternity. Not now, but eventually he will. And if you guys didn't know, contrary to popular belief, the devil does not live in hell. I know we all got taught that growing up and thought that, but that's not actually where he lives. I'm able to flip a dumpster over my head. Is that demonic? I have no clue what that means. Is that a demon? I don't know. I don't know what that means. You flip a dumpster over your head? Do demons pretend to be angels to someone with a vision trying to deceive him? Um, it's, de it's definitely possible. Yeah, that could happen. But if you have a relationship with God, you don't have to worry about that. Because God will help you discern whether it's an angel or a demon. If you don't have a relationship with God, definitely a demon could come as an angel. Chastity Barker, I got you. Check out the map, Chastity. Thank you for the donation. Check out the map for sure if you need deliverance. I'll probably stay on, guys, for another five or ten minutes, and then I'm going to get off because I got stuff still to do tonight. Do you have any thoughts on the Apostolic Pentecostal Church? I can't even give you a thought on it because every time someone says my church is apostol apostolic or Pentecostal, there's like a million beliefs within those. So I don't know what Apostolic Pentecostal teaches when you just say Apostolic Pentecostal because there's like a thousand denominations for Pentecostal, a thousand denominations for Apostolic. Mm-mm. What's the longest you fasted for and what was it from? Probably when I got saved, I didn't eat for about close to two weeks. What do you think about the book of Adam and Eve? I have no clue because I've never read it or heard about it. So sorry. The kitten from my backyard is watching. Hi, cat in the backyard. Is your church a denomination church? No, we are non-denominational. 
Can you bring in Harvest, please? I probably won't bring in my kids right now because I'm about to get off. I usually will stay on for two hours minimum, which is, I know, it's like, oh, only two hours. But I have a lot to do tonight. I still have to record several videos. And uh, I got a plane to catch in the morning. Yolanda Driggs, what is her email? I will email her tonight. Her, she must be getting, her, my emails must be getting blocked. So Yolanda, go ahead and type her email and I'll send her an email tonight. Yeah, just go ahead and type her email, Yolanda, in the chat and I will email her. Did Adam have a wife named Lilith before Eve? No. <clears throat> no, that's like mythology, not scriptural. What does it mean when someone cries uncontrollably during deliverance? Um, nothing. It's normal for a person to cry. Sometimes it's the demon usually crying, not them. And the demon's crying. I'll read Venmo off stream, Cindy and Hobbs. I'm so sorry. I totally forgot about it tonight. I'll read it off stream. Yeah, Yolanda, uh, I don't see the email, but go ahead and type it. Maybe type it a couple times until I acknowledge that I have it. And then I'll, I'll reach out to her. Yes, Venmo's working. I probably won't read it on stream tonight. Um, only because I'm kind of in a rush to get off here. But I appreciate you guys. We had about 1,500 tonight, which is amazing for a Friday night call-in. I appreciate you guys. It always feels, guys, kind of like an uphill battle at times with online because a lot of it is about the algorithm. So it just feels bad sometimes when you like you work to try to build up an audience and it's every time you go live, it's like you have to re -get a, rebuild, rebuild. So I really appreciate all of you that are here because it could feel at times discouraging just the way the whole algorithm system set up or, or social media in general. The fact that you can post a video and get 150,000 views and post another video just like it and get 10,000 all because of what the algorithm chooses to promote is just feels weird. Um, I don't see it yet, Yolanda. I'm, I'm scrolling slowly through the chat. When you die, you automatically judge. Yes, when you die, you stand before God for judgment. It's appointed for man to die once, then comes judgment, is what the Bible says. All right. If you guys see Yolanda post the email, type one or something so I know, but I, I haven't seen it yet. Why did I get the spirit of anger? I'm not sure. It's hard to say why a certain spirit came in um, because a spirit doesn't have to always come in based on the sin that you commit. Some spirits come in that are unrelated to the sin you commit. Mm -mm. Did you take down your video with Catherine Crick? Yes, I've already talked about that before. I'm not going to talk about it every single stream, but the two videos I had with Catherine Crick, I did remove for those of you that are, have asked. And I have, I don't even know what video, but I did talk about it. But again, um, I have almost about 700 videos on my channel. So it's hard to point to the exact one. Yolanda, I never saw the email. Are you still there? I didn't see the email. I don't know what's going on in Discord, but someone's fighting about something. I don't know. I'm not reading. I can't read all three chats right now. Sorry, guys. There's too much going on here. Is it okay to record positive affirmations and Bible verses and sleep listening to it? Uh, yeah, it's okay to, to sleep to audio Bible for sure. Yeah, and of course, if you're speaking scripture, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that if you're speaking scripture. Yolanda, your mom should also have my email if she's a partner. I, I personally email every single partner my personal email. So she should have that. If she looks up my name in her email, she could probably find it pretty quickly. And then I, I, I don't see your comments at all. You kind of disappeared after I said that. So um, just have her email me and I'll, I'll get right back to her. Uh, do only people who have killed someone get haunted by a dead person? I know someone who's seeing a dead person. I'm suspicious. No, not only people that kill people. It's not a dead person, Jules. It's a familiar spirit. And they probably opened a door. That's why they're being harassed by it. Chat is moving really, really quick tonight, guys. And I'm working my best to read as much as I can. 
What does it mean when out of nowhere there's a ring in your right ear? It doesn't it doesn't always mean anything. It could be just a natural thing. It's not uncommon to have randomly a, a ringing in your ear. I looked it up years ago. I forgot why, but there's like also a physical reason. So it's not always a spiritual thing. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with listening to audio Bible or scripture while you sleep. It's a great thing. What is a prerequisite to taking communion? If any, just examining yourself and making sure you're doing it for the right reasons and having a pure heart when you do it. That's it. In the Bible, when Paul said, like, you guys are taking communion and you're not examining yourselves and you're sick and dying, they were literally um, overeating while the poor were starving. And it was just, it was a whole thing. You could do some research on it. But I talked about it in my video when I taught on when Paul says that in communion. Um, so yeah, just examine your heart and you'll be fine taking it. Can you get a bad feeling when you're around someone? Can that be part of discerning of spirits? Yes. Yes, that's part of discerning of spirits is when you start feeling what they're going through or what's going on with them, for sure. I'm not sure what you guys are talking about with autism in the chat, but I see a lot of comments on autism. I'm not sure. Is it biblical to scream and laugh and feel the Holy Spirit? I don't know. I wouldn't say it's biblical, no, because we don't see anybody laughing or screaming in the Bible. Does it happen? I mean, it could happen, but I don't think it's a very common thing. All right, guys. I Listen, I could be on here all night and talk to you guys. Yolanda, have your mom email me because you disappeared after I said, what is her email? I love you guys. I appreciate you guys, you being here. You know, I just appreciate it. Okay, I'm not going to do this whole spill on on what I was going to say. Thank you so much, Pilar. Um, I appreciate you. I said thank you. But I have new videos coming out this weekend. It really does help when you guys, and you listen, if you're still here, you probably already do. But when you guys like the video, share the videos and comment when they're posted at 6 o'clock, it means a lot. I put a lot of work into them, so it means a lot. I will be in Arizona on Sunday. The message will be live streamed on Facebook and it'll also be on my channel this week. But I really do appreciate you guys. I love every single one of you. Let's just get a one in the chat just cause. All right, let's just get a one for old time's sake because we haven't said it in a long time. We used to always say type one, type one. But yeah, go ahead and type one. Freeze my bot here. I appreciate you guys. Monday, I'll be live with a message to you guys. And then Tuesday, Dr. Michael Brown to talk about a post-tribulation rapture. I'm going to ask him to destroy my arguments, okay? I'm going to give him my arguments and say, destroy them. Show me. And so I'm excited to learn and to just, you know, hear what he has to say. He's an awesome man of God. You don't want to miss that. I appreciate you guys' support in the Discord. I see you guys in the Discord. You guys are awesome. Um, I'll be going through a lot of Discord messages tomorrow. Thank you guys. appreciate you guys. Awesome call in. And we'll see you guys on Monday night. New stream, new uploads tomorrow and Sunday. Love you guys. See you guys. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. See you guys. Good night. I see all the ones. Good night, guys. Love you all. Maya, Miriam, Nicole, Francisco, Belinda, Lolo, Jacob, Cheryl, Rachel, Top Tech, Rihanna. Hello, hello, hello. Love you guys. Thank you. Good night. Bye. See you guys. You hang up first. Thank you to everyone that donated and sewed. I appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you, Commissioned. I see you on Discord. Thanks for all the love on Discord, guys. I don't have time tonight to go on and chat like I do after stream usually. But, but yeah, I love you guys. I'm still there lurking, all right? awesome community on discord bobblehead all right the bobblehead i'll show the bobblehead i haven't shown him in a long time here you go good night everybody those of you that waited for the bobblehead there he is some of you just wait till i really end because you know you never know what's gonna happen but there's the bobblehead if you haven't seen him he's been sitting here shaking his head since 1991 okay see you guys <laughs> for those that stayed Okay, bye.